No, I I was not. Do you guys want to go around? Sure. Like, Who's in the audience? Yeah. Push it in. Okay. Sure. Well, that works. <laughs> Wait, I I I just having a thought. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought everybody. Got no, no, we did. Okay. All right. Let's just uh, go go counterclockwise. Does that work? Is that good? He's probably uh, there. You're more handsome than I. Well, I can't argue with that. Okay. We're burning time, guys. Let's go. <laughs> so, um, Sean was just telling us that he, he said it was okay for you to spoil any of the really big secrets coming up. In <laughs> so, go ahead and spill. So, up. here's who dies. <laughs> Uh, what are you excited uh, for fans to get to experience with, with you know, Void Rivals or any other things that you're kind of having creative input on? Is there anything that uh, you can talk about? Yeah, yeah, I think that what we're most excited about is now that we're in year two, we've already gotten through the proof of concept phase. So everything that we're doing with Energy Universe has been met with a really positive response from the diehard fans. And uh, it's kind of put us in a place where we are uh, kind of exploding with ideas of being able to make far reaching plans. Uh, you know, we had already put some far-reaching plans in motion just to make sure that we had some places to go in the case of success. But, uh, you know, now that we're into year two, uh, you know, I know, you know, what's going to be happening like way down the line in Void Rivals. We're already making far-reaching plans with Transformers. Uh, I've seen some very long far-reaching documents for Josh Williamson for G.I. Joe that has a ton of different exciting stuff. And, you know, this is a, a massively expansive world that we're building here. Yeah. Uh, if you just look at a list of G.I. Joe and Transformers characters and then we're adding new stuff with Void Rivals, it definitely rivals what Marvel and DC have as far as like, you know, character breadth. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, the goal is to have a robust shared universe that like is the ideal that you've always wanted for Marvel and DC, but they've gotten so large and unwieldy. There's certain things that, oh, well, this isn't continuity anymore. And this is this, and this is that. And we're trying to do something that's like more cohesive. Yeah. Uh, and it's just really great getting the chance to build that. Great. Tell us about the fever dream that, uh, and you know, made you come up with the Energon universe <laughs> because, yeah. you know, being from the growing up in the eighties and having like you know Transformers and GI Joe as my you know toys that I grew up with. It's just yeah, like, great to see them all in one. And with he's had like issues getting them to kind of like work together. Or, well, it's it's. Uh, yeah, so so huge fan of both G.I. Joe and Transformers from the get-go, you know, I mean, not the 60s G.I. Joe stuff, but, you know, the 80s. So, uh, uh, I am old, but not quite that old. It's so, G.I. Yeah, Joe, we all know. Yeah, right. So, but, you know, those were largely kept, you know, separate, you know, church and state or whatever, uh, aside from, like, some big crossover events or some things that happen along the way, and uh, when it became available you know when it when it seemed like skybound could possibly get the license i thought you know something as integrated as this where they really like intermingled and dovetailed into one cohesive universe was something that would work but it depends on which gi joe you choose you know the gi joe uh that is you know like very like military based and, and real world based and and uh is a little bit more grounded like you know larry hama's real american hero you start throwing transformers into that mix and it's it's downright disrespectful to a certain extent you know uh and so it's great that we have that book existing and we get to continue that and it gives us the leeway to do weird gi joe you know gi joe that uh uh sometime you know like in the late 80s early 90s when things got a little bit like crazier and cobra law got introduced and, and different elements like that if you have that gi joe that gi joe dovetails like perfectly with the transformers universe and it's almost like anything goes and so that's really like as long as you kind of lean towards that then it's like hey we got peanut butter and jelly we got chocolate peanut butter <laughs> peanut butter goes well with everything right so uh uh you know it's it it it, it really gave us a, a an opportunity to do some really cool things and so uh you know that was really the thing that got me really excited was just like you know, how do you do a universe where Duke and Optimus Prime both exist at the same time and, you know, will interact at a certain point and, and it does make sense. Well, they, they always interacted in my little play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we know there are more toys out there to play with, but you didn't mention that that was the thing with DC and Marvel that they just got to be. So right now you're just focusing on Transformers. Yeah. Show, but maybe later on? 
mask? Uh, I mean, you know, mask, I think, would be the natural progression. I think that that's the other one from the 80s that has the solid fan base and it's got the cool toys. And I certainly had some, some mask toys in my day. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, I mean, it seems like the natural progression, but you know, right now our focus is on GI Joe and Transformers and all the characters there, uh, you know, who knows what the future holds, but I will say that we are very like, like painstakingly meticulous on growth and expansion and how we approach it. Um, you know, we want to maintain this level of success and maintain this level of quality. And I think that if we grow too fast, I think that's when things can get unwieldy. Um, you know, we were doing the G.I. Joe miniseries for a while. And we were keeping things to four books at a time. Uh, we're actually going down to three books when we launched G.I. Joe. We're not going to have a fourth book for a while. So this is a very tight universe where, you know, it's it's important to us that people can go into the comic shop every month, buy these three comics, get the full universe, get every single little piece of everything that we need. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and it's not, you know, going to gonna grow past that for, you know, some time. So uh, uh, when we do expand, uh, we'll be doing it methodically to make sure that we don't, uh, you know, go too too much too fast and kind of drive people away. Yeah, uh, you know the, the the action figure side of things. Like we kind of have our sandbox, and and Hasbro is very collaborative with us. Um, I I hope that as time progresses and we get like more into what we're doing, we'll be able to kind of play off of them more and actually kind of see uh, what we're doing reflected in some of the toys that they do. Uh, there's no guarantee of that. We don't have any kind of like hand in that or anything. And, uh, and we just have to like let Hasbro do their thing. So uh, it would be nice, but uh, you know, who knows what the future holds. Speaking of which, uh, with Destro ending this past week, uh, is there are we coming closer to seeing the crossover between White Rivals and Transformers GI Joe? Uh, I mean, crossover is the exact same kind of uh, discussion as like expansion. I think that it is inevitable that there will be a massive crossover in the Energon universe. I think that it will only work if it comes when you least expect it, and it is special. I think that one of the like failures on Marvel and DC's fault, or on Marvel and DC's part, is that uh, uh, events aren't even events anymore. It's like, okay, let me set my watch. It's event time again. It's uh, uh, it, 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 Yeah, it's like it was. It was every year. Then it's every like six months. It's almost gotten to the point where, depending on what you count as an event, it's almost every quarter, and they're selling less and less. And so, uh, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that you know. If we ever do an event, it will be a culmination of years of storytelling. It will be worthy of being an event. And when it happens, it's not going to happen again until there's more years of storytelling that could culminate in another one. And it's not going to be a, a, a like regulated cadence. You're not going to know when it's going to happen. Uh, and when it does happen, it'll be something hopefully monumental and exciting. So uh, uh, like I say, the goal is to eventually get there, but it could be many, many years before you see some kind of massive event, uh, you know, at, at the Energon universe. That said, you know, we're seeing Pythona and the Royal Guard show up in Void Rivals. We're going to start seeing some really exciting, surprising things in G.I. Joe as G.I. Joe goes. And so, you know, like, like we're definitely going to have big storylines and we're going to have like very exciting things that are happening where, you know, you might see like, G.I. Joe and Boy Rivals interacting in a really exciting way for a couple of issues, or Transformers and Boy Rivals, or Transformers and G.I. Joe. Um, but, you know, as far as like a big, all encompassing event, we have to earn that. And that's very important to us. We're uh, full of years worth of issues into the American hero. Uh, orders still seem strong at stores. Uh, print runs pretty high. <laughs> what are you guys doing right that IDW is doing wrong? Well? Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, put me on the spot. Out of my head. No, I mean, I, I, to be honest, uh, it's it's really taken us by surprise as well. Uh, you know, I think that tough question to answer. I think that there is a uh, there is an invisible art to the making of comics. I'm going to just answer honestly. I may get in trouble for this. I'm sorry. Very talented people were working on Real American Hero at IDW. I think that uh, lettering and coloring is something that is of utmost importance in the final aesthetic of what you see 
in comics. And I think that to a certain extent, there were really great artists doing Real American Hero. Uh, is it Neto Diaz? He, he was great. Uh, and I just think the style of coloring and the style of lettering that IDW tried to incorporate uh, just has like a, a an effect that kind of makes a book look not necessarily as good as it could. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's all a matter of taste. I could be completely wrong. You asked me a question. I didn't want to just vamp. I feel like I was backed in a corner. But I feel like those tiny elements actually just add a level of quality that make a book look, you know, different. And uh, now I have very talented letters, letters and colorists that are uh, very angry at me. And uh, <laughs> hopefully no one sees this answer. But uh, uh, I, I don't want to be critical of IDW, though. Like, they had these characters for, I think, 16 years and did some absolutely historic, absolutely monumental things with these characters. We wouldn't be able to do what we were doing if they hadn't done what they were doing. Uh, you know, they reestablished the numbering. They brought Larry Hama back. They did, what did they start with, like 150-something? And now, and they ran it all the way to 300. Yeah, so they almost did as many issues of Real American Hero as as Marvel did originally. Uh, you know, they should be you know commended for everything that they did. I don't want to seem like I like I'm negative on that stuff, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just like it's not just the nostalgia bump of three hundred one, three ten, three eleven. I mean, that definitely helped. I think that uh, you you can see when Spawn hit issue three hundred. Uh, sales definitely skyrocketed. I think that's a huge element to it as well. Uh, I wish I had thought of that, and I would have said that was the answer. Can I go back and say that that's my answer? <laughs> um, oh, gosh. I'll try and make it easier. I don't know. Sure. I think it's a little easier than that. But so, so you, you create The Walking Dead, which becomes a legitimate pop culture juggernaut. You create Invincible, which is on its way to becoming a pop culture juggernaut. Now you've taken these beloved, you know, iconic characters and, and relaunch them in a way the comics world hasn't seen in a long time so do you ever just wake up in the morning and go like i'm robert kirkman and I'm, <laughs> I'm, that's pretty awesome like everybody else take a step back how do you stay grounded a little bit sometimes i feel like uh, i mean I, i've never done that uh uh i'm very happy with where i'm at and i'm very proud of what i've accomplished i think that uh uh I have a, a immediate family that could not care less about <laughs> everything I've done. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I come here and people say nice things like that. Right. I go home, which is where I am 90% of the time, and no one says anything like that ever. Uh, I get a lot of like, why don't you help out around here more? Why don't you clean up? This? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? So I really feel like I'm actually like a failure in most cases. <laughs> Um, so it, it, that helps, that helps me, that helps me stay grounded. That makes sense. Great. I take out the trash sometimes. <laughs> okay. what they, I don't know what they want from me. My kids are teenagers. I right. feel like they should be doing everything. <laughs> Absolutely. But, so knowing what you know now about the industry and everything else, what would you tell your younger self that you know now that you wish you knew then? And I wouldn't, I would, I would tell him nothing. I, I wouldn't want to jinx it. I did so great. But, uh, that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I go back ten minutes. Yeah, please, Lordy, Lordy. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it's gonna happen. But uh, uh, I mean, uh, I think that uh, I mean I definitely made some mistakes along the way. Uh, I maybe wouldn't have uh, uh, done any of those books. <laughs> <laughs> I love the two <laughs> That's the one you picked. It's my daughter's middle name. That's awesome. I had so much fun yeah, on that book. I don't want to derail this entire thing talking right. about Jubilee for a minute. But uh, but yeah, that was that was a fun book. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Well, we'll go to the next answer. <laughs> All right. So we've seen the deluxe edition of volumes one announced. We've seen the covers. How do you all go thinking ahead of like the map people when you've got like like you have John for example? Mm -hmm. Different miniseries, you know, you have different miniseries where it's transformed is just one. But with GI Joe, like Volume Two, be coming out way before anything else. Uh, I don't know what. Yeah, I, I, so the GI Joe. Um, so there's like the Duke trade, the you know Scarlet trade, Destro, Cobra Commander. Uh, those are going to be collected in hardcovers that are branded uh, Codename GI Joe. 
And then, have we announced this? I feel like I might be... Uh, there were three announcements. There was a uh, Boy Rivals the Lux Edition. They, okay, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then, so then the GI Joe series will just be collected in GI Joe hardcover number one. So that's that's how that'll work. But you'll know that the code name GI Joe stuff leads into GI Joe. Those are the miniseries. Yeah, those are the oh, miniseries. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, you know, we did it a little bit different with GI Joe just because, uh, you know, coming off of all the GI Joe stuff that IDW had done, we wanted to try and like key in on individual characters. And make the individual characters like interesting and 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 really kind of dig into them to kind of put them on as high a pedestal as possible so that when the gi joe book was coming out which is where we're at now you're like oh my gosh i'm gonna get destro and i'm gonna get scarlet i'm gonna get duke and i'm gonna get you know all the other characters that were introduced in those miniseries like now they're now in one book together so the idea of gi joe existing and being its own title is actually special okay so so that was the that was the tactic we were trying to incorporate there and, and it seems to have worked out but yeah. Until the cross we have everything. It'll be fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. We've got it all figured out. All right. Time to rest. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sure, Thank you. Sure, man. Thank you. Yeah, don't quote me on that. that letter Tell letter. us more about why you hate letters. No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it I like them? Robert, if you try to make a stuff themselves. <laughs> <laughs>